is a person who has accepted Christ as his personal Savior from sin. The reason he goes to Christ for pardon from sin is because the law of God and the Spirit of God have made him conscious of his sin. God has promised that when a person confesses and puts away sin, he will forgive. Hello friends, this is Savior Mian with the Hope and Truth Perspective. Ingredients para makilala nato ang atong Diyos is by faith. And all are done is by faith ng Diyos. Mao ka na ang tulog ka pamaagi may gansunan. Ato ka ng tunan, ikadara, atong ikinabuhi. Pag ikatalo, atong ikalipay. The Holy Spirit will guide us. The Bible will teach us the true essence or the true meaning. Kung lagot na ito, magbasa ang Biblia, may gansunan, kay makapaayo na sa ato. Daghan nga mga question niya build up sa ato mind. So, kadalasan, especially, mga question kita nga, gisulat ba ni sa tao, mismo ang tao, wala sang guidance of the Holy Spirit, wala sang guidance sa Diyos. So, tihanta ka mo, really perfect at sa Bindad ng Diyos. Wala silang nag-declare of perfect sa Diyos. Ah, o, wala na nila ayon nga ginatestify, hindi nga libro, ma-o ang ato ng Diyos, which is our beloved Jesus Christ. Kasi when we say, pure in heart, my Diyos, these are the sinless. Labaw sa ganan, my Diyos. Salamatan ang buhay natin ng binangon mo. Magagiyak ka natin sa matagal na. Example to ano. Brother, Savior may yan. And this is the Hope, Truth, Perspective. It is this gracious love of Christ which awakens love in the heart of a sinner so that he then desires to do God's will. Therefore, the Christian is never opposed to the keeping of God's law. Now, How does a person become a Christian? It is a three-step process. It can be referred to as the A, B, C method. Letter A, accept Christ as Savior. And letter B, believe Christ to be the Son of God. And letter C, confess your sins. Next, when a person is converted to Christ, what takes place? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. In his conversation with Nicodemus, Jesus made it clear that being converted to Christ is a new birth. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Through what power is the new birth accomplished? For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring Word of God. What do all people have in common? For all have seen and fall short of the glory of God. Man is a sinner. As such, he cannot save himself. He is condemned to die. His only hope of life is through the power of God. Sinfulness is a part of man's nature. How does God provide pardon for sins of the past and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus? God presented Him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in His blood. He did this to demonstrate His justice because in His forbearance, He had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. Christ's death for sin paid the price of our transgression. Now, what kind of life follows the new birth? In explaining the new birth to Nicodemus, Jesus said, Flesh give birth to flesh, but the Spirit give birth to spirit. For what the law was powerless to do, in that is, was weakened by the sinful nature. God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful men to be a sin offering. And so He condemned sin in sinful men in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, not live according to the sinful nature but according to the Spirit. The Holy Spirit so changes the heart that now we love of God supremely and our fellow men as ourselves so that we choose to live out these precepts. 
How will the Christian regard God's law? May your unfailing love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. I will always obey your law forever and never, for I delight in your commands because I love them. It must be ever remembered that being saved by God's grace does not make of no effect the principle of God's law. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all, rather we uphold the law. When Jesus was asked, What shall I do that I may have eternal life? Jesus replied by saying, If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. The rich young ruler professed to have kept the commandments, but Jesus showed him by magnifying the law that he had not really been a commandment keeper. Paul commands, take hold of the eternal life. But how? Let us not refuse to enter the open door to pardon and obedience through the power and the grace of God.